So I think I'm just standing between your lungs. I'm the last speaker between lungs. I do not have a slide to show. I have a story to tell you. So, as you have heard that I have worked 15 years in multinational companies and global companies. At some point in time in my career, I took a job in a global company as head of marketing. And then, like most of the global com companies, it was a metrics organization. And it has two reporting. I have two bosses, one sitting in Bangladesh, and uh, one boss sitting in the Globe House, the capital brands, and everything. The reason behind that, why I'm actually sharing this uh, event with you, it happened five years back, and it has profoundly changed my life. So I think it's worth sharing. So, regarding my first boss, he was the country head of commercial banking, and he was such a passionate person about Bangladesh. Such an optimist. I've never seen more optimist person regarding Bangladesh than him. So, in all my marketing campaigns that I was trying to plan, we wanted all the cultural ingredients to be in part, the Bangladeshi colors to be in there. But my boss was sitting in Globe House, they more have a templated version of the campaign because they run a global brand. So, every time I pitch a proposal, it gets rejected. And then I fight because country is the profit center. We make the business. Then we say our customer wants it. Then finally, then they are close. That's how it was going for the past six months. Then it was time for the review. After six months of my job, and the review came, I became unsuccessful. The review came that I was not fit for the role, and my boss has given an extremely harsh feedback regarding my competency, regarding all my accolades that I have through other organizations. And the last word that is struck me the most, it says, even Mr. Manuri Zaman, he slept during the training in the Globe House. What? He slept during the training? <laughs> I couldn't take the feedback. How could someone say that? Even if I was sleeping in a formal document, how could you? Then I doctored an email. Okay? And it was probably the best email that I had written. This long, with lots of good words put in places, if you understand what the good words means. <laughs> then I went back to my boss, the local one, and said, this is what I'm going to send. I'm not asking for approval, so it is going to come back to you. So you are just informed. He said one thing to me, nice email, fantastic. Do one more thing, send it tomorrow morning. And go back today and just think how you have disappointed her so much that she had wrote that plan. How you have won that bridge? I've taken his advice and then went back. For that one night, I tried to get a self-reflection. That what did I do? And that night actually changed my life. Next morning, when I came back and I opened that email, I was ashamed. My God, what I have written. Instead, I've sent an email with two words, acknowledge, thank you for your feedback, and let's work together for a better future. That's it. Then, through a couple of weeks, we had a couple of calls, we tried to understand each other's priorities, and I was really trying to, I was just listening to her. I said that, what was your priority, what was your KPI? Then I understood that, this company has branches in 100 countries. If every country does their own campaign, create their own brand, put their own colors, and you go to Google and you search that company name, it comes like a rainbow. It values the brand because it was a multi billion dollar brand. But sometimes she had to agree to me because 
I was doing it in the name of the customers, right? So then I understood that literally then everything that I had to do was I had to be a little bit open. I had to understand what her point of view was and share what was my objective. And we could really see that we are not talking much different. We just have to find out what is common in between us and we have to find a solution. So from that event, then I thought further and we understood that every time we give a feedback to someone, even if it is asked or it is not, we share our opinion. What do we do? Either we narrate the facts, we give our judgment, we either appreciate or reprimand, and last we say the way forward. One fantastic thing happens. Just a month back, I was taking a workshop for the senior students in the business administration. One student gave a presentation. I asked her fellow students to give the feedback. The first one he started with, it, uh, he was doing good, but he was his body language was not right, and he was doing that. As soon as you say that, you will hostile the people, right? The rest of the sentence, whatever you are saying, doesn't pass through. So what? What is a better model? Everybody has something good in it, right? If you say something good about me, you will get my attention. As soon as you say, it was fantastic, then I'm all yes, right? Yeah, tell me more, tell me more. Yes. That's the policy, that's how the human brain works, right? That's, everybody wants attention. We upload a picture in the Facebook, and we check how many likes, right? In the morning, sometimes we register ourselves, yeah, let's not say it in the night. In the morning, we'll see how many likes. It could be more. That's how the human psychology works. But often, so explicitly we say about their performance, but implicitly, every time we speak to the people, we also tell about who we are. When we give feedback, we not only give the feedback about that person, we also give the feedback about ourselves. That's why do we come from? This is why you ask feedback from probably an uneducated person and an educated person, it will be different because they have their own version, own story, own interpretation of the incident. So what could be a better model? A very easy one. I would not say it's a tool or something. If you say, yeah, you have done this and it was good, it would have been even better if you could have done this way, right? It's a very easy model to follow sometimes. And the application of this is far-reaching. You speak with your kids, you speak with your wife, you speak with your friends, family, teachers, students, anywhere. As soon as you judge someone, as soon as, when your fellow students say, oh, your body language was not there, you are saying, you are saying body language was not there, look at yourself. <laughs> right? You are judging me, I will judge you. That, that's the way we react. So next time, probably you will have some better feedbacks in the afterwards. Probably those are specific. Probably what I said, probably what eye contact was not good. But you will not listen to them. As soon as you say you are not good, then you will say you will only hear, I'm not good, I'm not good, I'm not good, I'm not good. That's what you will hear. So if you really want to care about someone, say something good about themselves. And then try to help it. Sometimes we say that there is a very widely known phrase that feedback is a gift, right? I have said it's feedback is rather in Bangladesh, mostly. Feedback is a gift with a surprise box. You open it and you get a punch. <laughs> right? You give someone that give me a feedback and they will judge you. Let's not do that. And then you can change your life, right? So, theme of today's discussion is paradigm shift. Right? So we often think that what this paradigm shift comes from.
So we often think that the world is hostile to us. I've been talking with the students yesterday that we are lacking motivations. We need motivations to continue or something. Right? So I'm not here to give the motivation. The only thing, if you are open about it, and you can change the world from your perspective by changing yourself. That I understood. Because before, from the story, I was only pointing out that it's her fault. She was only asking me, do that, do that, do that. And I was defending it. But as soon as I understood that why she was doing it, that we are on the same team. I'm not really doing the different things. Right? So, my takeaway from this story is if you are being respectful to people and when you give someone's opinion, please do care about it because you are telling about yourself first and the person second. Remember. And if you can do it rightly, only then it will be a gift. However, don't take it too much literally. Like if a police is counseling a criminal, he cannot say that, yeah, I understood, you do the, that criminal thing, but even better if you do, don't, right? So, you will directly say the feedback, which is apparent, the feedback is apparent, please give them the feedback. But sometimes, people see that whether you are holding that particular value. I will give an example. Let's say, if today it was a discussion regarding the health, diet, keeping in shape, I would not have been here. True? I cannot be role model for that. So if I would say that, yeah, you have to, like he said, that when you have your dinner, right? So, and you would present, Ashton Abdi will say. So that's the way, right? Because you yourself are not the beholder of the value. How can you speak of it? But again, when it's a professional section, you went to the doctor, the doctor is giving the advice regarding the diet or something, and if he's fat, it is okay. You cannot say that, oh, the doctor is fat, so I will not give that, I will not take that advice. Right? So, I will not, I, I have nothing much more to say. The key points that I would all like you to take today is, Every time we have an opportunity to talk about someone, it is also an opportunity to talk about ourselves. And every time it is a choice. Do not feel yourself constrained. Okay, he did a good job. How could I say he did a good job? I am not asking to say he did a good job. You can inspire him to do a good job, right? So, you speak from a perspective that you are presenting yourself, not judging someone. Because that's the exact way you want to be treated in the future. Right? Thank you. Let me get